Noon starts right now. And new at noon, San Antonio police searching for a pair of suspects after a crash in a stolen vehicle. Officers tell us the pair was first spotted at a gas station on the southwest side. That's when the man and woman took off. Police say they ended up crashing near Loop 410 and Somerset Road. Then they ran away from the scene. At last check, DPS was helping SAPD look for the suspects, but so far they have not arrested anyone. And a look outside with live cam, 90 degrees. Another. Oh wait, there's a cloud. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, two, two or three clouds <laughs> out there right now. Yeah, the unofficial end of summer is a sizzler. Temperatures are going to be at 100 degrees again for the 68th time this year. Take a look at temperatures outside right now. 91 degrees at the airport, 91 in Del Rio, 89 in Kerrville, 88 in Rock Springs. A little bit closer to San Antonio, you can see those puffy cumulus clouds that have really uh, started to pop up in, in areas. But generally, that's about all the shade we're going to get this afternoon is a few isolated little clouds here and there. 93 in New Braunfels, 94 at Stinson, and 91 in Rio Medina. For the rest of your Labor Day, it's this humidity is going to come down. Right now, it is pretty humid with dew points in the 70s. But as we head in throughout the rest of the afternoon, dew points will come down. Humidity will come down, but it's still going to be hot. 100 degrees for the high this afternoon. High fire danger all afternoon long. So please be careful careful with those backyard barbecues. Sun's going to set at 753 and then it's going to be a mild and breezy evening. Temperatures are going to fall into the uh, 90s after sunset. Still going to be 90 degrees at 10 p.m. Hey, coming up in the forecast, it is an anniversary of uh, the Bastrop fires. I want to talk a little bit about that. Speaking of high fire danger, high fire danger across the state of Texas, and we will take a look at the tropics. Tiffany. Thank you, Sarah. New this noon, police are trying to figure out who pulled the trigger after a woman ended up with gunshot wounds in both legs while she was driving on the west side. It happened around 1030 last night near the intersection of Culebra and North Sabinas, not far from I-10. Police say the woman was driving a pickup on Culebra when a bullet shot in through the door, hitting her in both legs. Two others were inside the car at the time. The woman was taken to the hospital. Police say her condition has stabilized. No one in their injuries were reported. A fire at a two-story building appears to have been started by accident. This happened on West Summit Avenue near Agenier Avenue. That's east of Blanco Road. It happened around 620 this morning. Firefighters on the scene told us they believe one of the occupants may have actually accidentally bumped into something with an open flame. And that's what led to the fire. They were able to get the flames out quickly. There were minor injuries, but only one person had to be taken in for care. Two units were damaged, but unfortunately, everyone who lived there is going to have to find somewhere else to live in the meantime. San Antonio fire crews are investigating what caused a blaze at an abandoned house. It happened just before 3.30 this morning on Creighton Avenue. That's near West South Cross Boulevard and Dwight Middle School on the city's southwest side. Firefighters say the fire was in the attic and completely engulfed the home. There were no injuries, but it could take a while before investigators determine what sparked the flames. Now to a search for an escaped prisoner who was serving time for murder on the East Coast. ABC's Rena Roy explains how a community is on edge after spotting the convict that has been on the loose after breaking out of a Pennsylvania prison last week. The desperate search is intensifying for convicted murderer Danilo Cavalcante, who disappeared from a Pennsylvania prison last week. This black and white surveillance video released by the county's district attorney's office shows what officials say is Cavalcante outside a home near the prison around 2 a.m. on Saturday. The fugitive was last seen on a residential ring camera less than two miles from Chester County Prison. He has been wearing prison-issued pants and also prison-issued shorts underneath. Authorities using helicopters, drones, and search dogs to try and locate the 34-year-old suspect. Tactical teams walking through backyards searching for any sign of him. I'm out putting together a soccer goal for my daughter and a state trooper that has a machine, like a, a tactical gear on with a machine gun walks through my front yard. Cavalcante escaped before being transferred to a state corrections facility to serve a life sentence for his conviction for stabbing his ex-girlfriend to death in front of her children. Police believe Cavalcante, who's also wanted for murder in his native Brazil, may have already tried to break into at least two homes in the search area. Possible sighting of the prisoner. There's a male subject walking northbound. 
people may be out of town. It's very likely that the suspect could attempt to break into one of those homes. Anyone who may spot the suspect is urged to call 911 instead of approaching him because he's considered extremely dangerous. It's still unclear how he broke out of prison in the first place. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A Northside ISD school board member is facing a charge of driving while intoxicated. Court records show Dr. Carla Durans was arrested over the weekend. Police say she refused breathalyzer and blood tests after she wasn't able to follow the instructions on a field sobriety test. An NISD official says they have no information on the arrest. Texas State Attorney General Ken Paxton now speaking to members of his own party calling for removing Republican members that are supporting his impeachment. He is currently under a gag order that prevents him from discussing the trial that begins tomorrow, but in remarks to a packed pavilion at a park near his North Texas home, Paxson blasted the Texas House of Representatives and impeached him and its leader, Speaker Dade Fillane. One of the new laws here in Texas is making it possible for women to get the menstrual products they need for a more affordable price. Since Texas is getting rid of the so-called tampon tax, churches around the Alamo City have been able to set up drives to help those get the products they need. The Temple Bethel Sisterhood recently worked with the diaper bank and ended up collecting almost $10,000 worth of products and $4,000 in monetary donations. The products will be delivered to different organizations around San Antonio, along with school districts. Having to make those tough decisions, whether I need to buy food, diapers, period supplies. So most mothers are going to say, well, I'm going to put my needs last. If you'd like to help the community, head to KSAT.com, where we explain how you can donate and also become a Diaper Bank client. Disappointing day for UTSA's quarterback, but his teammates and coach, not too worried about him. An artist is tapping into his vulnerable side for his latest exhibit, hoping to shine a light on a topic he says needs to be talked about. Details after the break. A San Antonio-based artist is dedicating his latest exhibit to his son, sharing difficult life changes and times of joy. We take a glimpse at what this artist has been through as he reflects on his life. It's so special because it's in the same neighborhood where I grew up. Albert Gonzalez spends countless hours painting and drawing in his studio, Southtown Art Gallery. You might have seen some of his art around town. Every art piece tells a different story. Everything that I do is pretty cathartic and everything's very intuitive. So uh, I like to just say it just kind of flows. Gonzalez is diving deep into his own life in his latest exhibit titled A Story to My Son. I want to make myself vulnerable. I want to, you know, share and express myself through my art. His artwork will be shown at the Carver Gallery located in the Joe Long Theater lobby. I just want to lead by example and share this story of resilience and love and, and pain and, and, you know, bring up the topic of, of divorce and family trauma because I, I feel it's a, it's a very much needed topic to discuss. Gonzalez invites the community to the exhibit opening on Thursday. But to have the opportunity to show at such a historic place in San Antonio, it means so much. And that's why I'm really excited for people to come out and experience it for themselves. A touching and unforgettable moment for the mother of a Rob Elementary shooting victim, Matei Rodriguez. During their show at San Antonio this past weekend, the popular Mexican pop rock band Mana called Anna Coronota up to the stage to be honored and serenaded. It was a huge surprise for Coronado, who was clearly both emotional and grateful. She said any honor like this just brings more attention to her fight for change. Hey, although she's not here, I am. And I will never stop. I will make sure her legacy continues hey. and I will always fight for her. Coronado also got to meet the band behind the scenes. Turns out Matei and the band's front man both love turtles. What a special moment there. Absolutely. Taking a look outside with live cam, it is dry, it is hot. You can see all that crunchy brown grass near the airport. Of course, a busy travel day uh, for many across the United States. Not too many issues on the roads as far as Texas is concerned. The aquifer, though, no change in the aquifer level, but it is important to note that the aquifer is still more than 30 feet below the monthly average. We need some more rain. 
And molds are moderate. They're down from yesterday. Ragweed is present in low amounts. A lot of people also grilling today. For your grilling forecast, you know it's a good day when you get to put the forecast on hamburgers and hot dogs. 100 this afternoon, 97 at 7 p.m. Sunset's going to be at 7.55 this evening for any late night barbecues. Temperatures are going to be in the 90s still by 9 p.m. And it's going to get pretty breezy this evening with gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, how long will we be seeing triple digits for this week? Those details ahead. Welcome back. A lot of kids and families are off today, so the pools are going to be busy, splash pads are going to be busy. Let's hope they're drinking a lot of water. They yes. got on Sunscreen? light colored clothing and a hat. <laughs> Men said that in a while. I guess we figured everybody know. knows it by now because it's been 100 <laughs> degrees for 60 plus days. <laughs> it's always good to do a reminder, isn't yeah. it, David? And yeah. speaking of reminders and safety, I want to remind everybody about 12 years ago from today was when the Bastrop fires began. This is the, by far the most devastating wildfire in Texas history. Over 32,000 acres were burned with over $325 million in damages. It's important to remember this on a day like today when fire danger is high all across the state of Texas. Obviously, there are different meteorological uh, symptom, uh, conditions right now than there were back in 2011, but still, it's very dry out there. Little to no soil moisture across a good portion of Texas, and we've got uh, sunny skies and warm temperatures as well. So from Dallas to San Angelo to Austin, that's where the fire danger is the highest. But even around San Antonio, we're seeing high fire danger throughout the day today and also out near Del Rio. It's a holiday weekend. A lot of people are out and about enjoying, enjoying the weather, cooking out, those kinds of things. So it's important to remember to use extra caution with any any kind of cookouts or things like that. Uh, in our local area, fire danger is the worst up near Fredericksburg, but honestly, all locations should exercise fire caution. And here's how you can do that. No campfires or burn piles this afternoon. Let's avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. This is a big one. Do not drag trailer chains and also don't park those vehicles on that high grass that could easily catch fire from that hot vehicle. Now, as we look at the radar, there's actually a few showers that are occurring in, in Victoria County, pushing into Lavaca County and then out toward the Houston area. These are going to stay well east of San Antonio and it's going to stay dry in the Alamo City today. Not only today, but for all of the upcoming week, we really don't even start to see a hint of chance for a shower or storm until next weekend and into early next week. But it's too soon to say for sure if we're going to get rain in San Antonio this far out. So We'll keep you posted, but unfortunately, it is going to be dry and hot for the first full week of September. 91 degrees outside right now. We do have a heat index. It feels like it's closer to 100. The humidity is a little higher at the moment with dew points in the 70s. However, dew points are going to come down for the remainder of the afternoon. When we're the hottest, we will not have much of a heat index value this afternoon. So looking at your afternoon forecast, partly cloudy and 100 for the high. South winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour and then uh, close to sunset temperatures will fall into the 90s. It's important to note that uh, it's going to be hot everywhere, including out near Del Rio, 103, 103 Carisa Springs, 103 Catula, 100 in Canyon Lake. And then tonight, winds are actually going to pick up from the south and from the southeast, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. In the tropics, we're nearing the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, and there's an area of interest out in the Atlantic that is likely going to become a hurricane. Now, all indications are right now that it is going to move and potentially either impact Bermuda or the eastern coast of the United States. We will keep you posted, but this does not look like it's going to be a system that will impact the Gulf of Mexico. Highs near 100 every single day for the first full week of September. Coming up in the forecast, a look at area lakes, which are pretty low on this Labor Day when a lot of people are trying to enjoy time out on the water. Great information. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, the key to one of the biggest upsets in college football coming up and prime time. I want you to believe in the Buffaloes. Well, at least it made it a little easier to believe in the Buffaloes. It was just a three-hour trip on 
I-10 East to Houston for the UTSA Roadrunners. They opened the season on the road against the Cougars, but it turned out to be a pretty long ride home. It was a rematch from last year's season opener in the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio. The game went to triple overtime, but the Cougars left town with the win 37 35 the roadrunners trying to return the favor they racked up 208 yards rushing one touchdown by Kavorian barnes who had 103 yards on the ground on 16 carries the roadrunners made their 2023 debut and our mary rominger also made her game day coverage of utsa debut optimism is at its highest right before the season starts for any team and that's how it was for the utsa football team who returned its championship caliber quarterback frank harris for his seventh season coming into saturday's opener against houston the roadrunners needed to step up their run game and they needed harris to command the offense Although aside from one strong drive in the first quarter fueled by big plays from tight end Dan Dishman, freshman receiver David Amador II, and back Kavorian Barnes, UTSA struggled offensively for most of the game and racked up eight costly penalties. You, you hate to oversimplify the game, man, but you just giving up a two-minute drive right before halftime, their four-minute offense at the end of the game, eight penalties. Three turnovers pretty much summed it up. In the third quarter, Harris threw three picks on three consecutive passing plays, with one ending in a touchdown for the Cougars to put them ahead 17 to 7. You know, one that the kid made a great play, first one. Uh, the second one, just to, he overthrew the ball, threw it too high. Third one, I had to watch that. I mean, Frank's usually pretty good, rolling to his left, threw back across his body on the drag route. I, had, I haven't really got to see that one up close. Still not out of the game. UTSA scored in the fourth quarter, but ran out of time, falling 17 to 14. We know we got to get better at some things. We're ready to learn, get ready to get back in there and watch film and ready to get better for next week. They're a good team, man. You know what I mean? It's just they, they made plays too. Um, and you know what I mean? It is what it is. So we just got to get ready for next week now. And um, you know what I mean? Just keep our heads high. UTSA opens its season 0-1. Once again, that was Mary Rominger from Houston. And how about a bobcat taking a big bite out of a bear in Waco Saturday? This was G.J. Kinney's debut with Texas State after coaching UIW last season. Quarterback T.J. Findlay was impressive. 22-30, 298 yards, three touchdowns. He also had a touchdown on the ground. Bobcats scored in every quarter and kept their lead despite giving up 416 yards in the air to the Baylor passing attack. Bobcats win at 42-31, their first win over a Power 5 team since moving up to the FBS level back in 2012. Texas Longhorns offense took some time to get going while they were hosting Rice. UT got stuffed twice on fourth down in the first half, and then the second half, total different story. Longhorns scored 21 points in the third quarter. Quarterback Quinn Ewers finished with 260 yards through the air. Head coach Steve Sarkeesian was pleased with how his defense played a huge role in responding to that slow start from his offense. And how about the Saturday shocker in college football? Pro Football Hall of Famer Deion Sanders winning in his debut as Colorado's head coach, knocking off TCU, a ranked opponent, which went to the national championship game last season. ABC's Andrew Dimbert breaks down that one for us. Colorado head coach Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Prime Time, taking the college football world by storm. Touchdown, Colorado! After the Buffaloes went 1-11 last year, the former NFL star corner turned coach, leading a stunning upset in his first week at the helm. Sanders gives it to him. Touchdown, Buffalo! Beating number 17-ranked TCU on the road Saturday, a TCU team that just played for a national championship. Whoa! Now, Boulder believes... People in the front office, people, people in the building, the fans, the students. Now everybody want to believe. Sanders took the Colorado job after three years coaching Jackson State University in Mississippi, and he took a swath of players with him to Boulder. A whopping 53 players transferred to Colorado to play for Prime, the most in college football. Among the transfers, Sanders' son and star QB Shadur Sanders. He set a school record with 510 passing yards against TCU with four touchdowns. Sanders! Cut at the 40, guess who? Travis Hunter. And two-way sensation Travis Hunter wants the highest touted recruit in the country. After the final whistle, the three overcome with emotion, soaking in the historic moment. My son, man. My pop right here. My son, my other son. You can't help but smile <laughs> looking at that. That's a pretty big day for Dion. We'll see how long that 
lasts. See mm -hmm. if you can build on that now. Cause that's, that's the big question. A lot of question marks going in, but he proved them. I love seeing the social media, all the posts of yeah. football is back. Had a lot of prime though this weekend. Yeah. A lot of it. <laughs> More news to come. A pair of recalls involving a high chair and chicken strips. Why the companies are asking customers return the products in the next half hour. And coming up today at five, many parents want to pay for their child's college education, but the cost of higher learning can be daunting. Besides student loans, there is another option families have. How the 529 College Savings Plan can make college a reality. That's coming up today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight.